Thank God. We welcome you tonight. We thank God for you this evening and what God's going to do for you tonight. Welcome those live watching live on the stream tonight. Thank you so much for joining with us tonight. I wish you could be here to feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit like we feel in this place tonight. There's power in the Holy Spirit. Power. Wonder working power. Praise God for the power, the blood of Jesus. Before you see the hug to the people, say, thank God for the, the name of Jesus. change things around just a little bit. We're going to do announcements after I get through tonight and receive the tithes and offers later on. But we feel like it's very important as the Spirit of God is moving to move with it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, we just uh, expect God to just minister to you whatever you've been believing God for. You may be having a smile on the outside put a frown on the inside. Before you leave tonight, we'll have a smile on the inside and on the outside. Praise God. Trust God. Lean not to your own understanding. Praise God. Amen. And I want to say before we read the scripture, thank you so much for Sunday for blessing us. Gifts, cards, all those wonderful sayings, beautiful cards. We read them over read every word, prayed over them. Such a blessing. Thank you again for blessing us this past Sunday. It was an honor to be your pastors for 42 years. Amen. Let's leave God for 42 more. <laughs> now that will be a miracle, I know. But we'd probably all be in heaven together by then. Rapture's got to take place way before then. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bible, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, and I'm going to start here tonight. But I'm going to do. We're going to do more praying tonight than anything else. It's important that we pray. Yeah. Let me say this: We prayed. Already, already prayed about schools and first responders and police officers, and all these other. We just prayed. All prayed about it now. We want to spend most of our time praying in the Holy Ghost because we're going to pray the perfect prayer tonight. Because I don't want us to get into repetitions and praying the same thing over again. That means we didn't believe it the first time. That's what we have to be careful about. It's so easy to do that because it's a tradition to keep praying it over and over. And go. You don't keep begging God for nothing. If you believe the first time, it's settled. It's a done deal. So we're going to praise God and worship God in tongues tonight. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And I want to start here, which is a very familiar passage of Scripture in Sodom's writings here, Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse twelve. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. He said to him, "I have heard your prayer, and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land." or send pestilence among the people. If my people, notice what it says, if my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and, give, and forgive their sins and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. In other words, he's going to pay close attention to your prayer of forgiveness and repentance. 
And that's the big thing we got to understand, the importance of repenting before God. Sometimes we just take for granted that we don't have to repent. But we have to repent. I don't know about you, but I have to repent daily. Amen. Not that I sin every day on purpose, but sometimes things come across my mind that I don't want it there. And of course, I'll cast it down in Jesus' name and repent. And thank God I've been forgiven of that, already been forgiven of it. Not going to be forgiven of it. I've already been forgiven of it. Amen. 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 And so Solomon here says, God will hear your prayers if you humble yourselves and pray. Seek his face. If there's ever a time to seek God, it's now. It's not a time now to wander off. It's not a time now to give up or quit. It's not a time to get slack. And I know the last three years have been a lot of slackness in the body of Christ. But thank God for those that have stood strong during the storm. Thank God you stood strong during the storm. And I got news for you, the storm ain't over. Amen. The storm will keep coming, but we still keep standing. Amen. And we are, keep, we are winners in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to the book of Jude. Let's look over here to the book of Jude tonight. And uh, let me see where I'm How many of you believe we're living in the last days? If this isn't the last days, I don't know what it will be. I mean, every single day is just increasing in prophecy being fulfilled through the Word of God. So much I like to know what God says about this. Read your Bible. Hear the voice of God through the Word of God. And Jude here is teaching in this little short 25 verses of scripture. He's a servant of Jesus Christ, first, first verse. He's a servant of Jesus Christ. He says here in verse 18, times you need to read it. I'll, I'll read the book of Jude over and over many times. You need to read it several times to get the gist of it. They told you beforehand in the last days, in the end time, there'll be more scoffers who seek to gratify their own unholy desires, following after their own ungodly passions. It is these who are ag agitators, setting up distinctions and causing division. There's so much division going on right now like I've never seen before. Merely sensual creatures, carnal, worldly-minded people, devoid of the Holy Spirit and destitute any higher spiritual life. They don't want anything more. They don't want no more spiritual things. They want, they're running from spiritual things. Running from God. But I'm telling you, there's a revival coming, church. A move of the Holy Spirit coming upon this land. Because Paul said, I mean, Luke says in the book of Acts chapter 2, there's going to be a great outpouring, a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days. It's going to be a quick work. It's going to be a quick work. But God will never give up on us. Praise God for a great move of the Holy Spirit. There's, all, there's some big... Powerful moves right now all over this world. People don't even realize it. I saw the other day somewhere in another country, thousands are being baptized at one time. Thousands being baptized at one time. Things are happening all across the world. The devil can't stop us. He tried to stop Jesus, but he couldn't do it. Now he's trying to stop you, and he can't do it. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. We're world overcomers by faith yes. in his name. We overcome everything in life through the word of God, through faith. He says here in verse 20, But you, beloved, building yourselves up, as you see these days approaching, things are happening. Build yourselves up, founded on the most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice. Higher, higher, praying 
and the Holy Spirit. Guard and keep yourselves in the love of God. Expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which will bring you unto life eternal. Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I've had to repeat, repent many times. I haven't prayed as much as I should have in the Holy Spirit. We get distracted. Amen. We get comfortable where we're at. But we need to spend some time praying in the Holy Spirit. I don't walk out of my house, never walk out of my house without praying in the Holy Spirit. I never live out throughout the day without praying, driving my car, I pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm always praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm always con con conscious of the Holy Spirit of God inside of me. I'm so thankful for the protection of God, listening to the Holy Spirit as I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, building yourself up, getting strong in the Holy Spirit. You need to get strong. Look at your neighbor. The neighbor gets strong in the Holy Spirit by praying in the Holy Spirit. We need to get strong in the Holy Spirit. There are three, time, three kinds of prayers here in verse 20. Faith is acting out on the written word. Stand on the word. Number two, holy faith. That's out of verse 20. Is acting out on the rhema word. This is what changes us. A spoken word, rhema word, is what we call a spoken word to you by God through his word. God speaks to us through his word. He can speak audible if he needs to, but he don't need to most of the time. I never heard an audible voice. I've heard it so loud on the inside, it sounds like an audible voice. But it's the word of God that we need to be attentive to and sensitive to his voice on the inside of us. He's all, God's always talking to us. Amen. And the reason we don't hear him often because we don't get quiet enough. Amen. Because we're doing more talking and less listening. I'm talking about when you're in prayer. It's good to just listen to God. Pray Amen. and wait and listen to God. Amen. Number three, holy faith is acting out on the rhema word. This is what I call, uh, this is what changes you. A word spoken to you by God through the word of God. Amen. And the most holy faith is acting out words spoken in tongues. And so many times as I've taught this over the years, I've thought about Brother Will Roberts in Oklahoma. How he prayed in the Holy Ghost when he built the city of faith. All that was built on tongues. Yeah. That whole place, when he walked, it was just land crossed there. He walked there, proved that on that property and, and just pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, God, what you want me to do here? Every building that was built was designed by the Holy Spirit. He saw every building. He got with his architect. He said, what God showed me, do this, do that, do this, do that. When you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you've got to speak out the vision God put into your heart, things you see on the inside of you. He did that. He walked across him. It land for days and hours and weeks, months, praying in the Holy Ghost. He got directed on every building on that property. If you've never been there, there's some place to see. Even to this day and time, it is so far advanced. Yes. It's so already ahead of our time right now. It's been built about 40, 40 years, I guess, 50 years. But it's been a long time. But because it was built, by the Holy Spirit. And when something is built by the Holy Spirit, it will never fall. Amen. And when you build your life on the Holy Spirit and praying in the Holy Spirit, you will never fail. Amen. You'll be strong in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Every time you pray in tongues, you're speaking the answer. Amen. You're praying in tongues, getting the answer from the Holy Spirit. Listen to God. Praying, speaking wisdom, speaking solutions. Your faith becomes holy when you pray in tongues. Praying in tongues keeps you in the secret place. This is what we call a secret weapon. Praying in tongues will give you peace. It'll give you peace every time. When you finish, when you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you finish praying in the tongues, say, I have the answer. 
He said, well, suppose I don't see the answer. Say, I have it anyway. You got to speak it out. I got the answer. And then it began to, uh, it began to form and begin to build on your words and form and, and, and like, a, like an architect. And you speak out of your mouth what God is speaking to you on the inside. And you do it by faith. You do it by faith, not by sight, not by how you feel. Amen? Amen. Praying in tongues is what we call deep calling to the deep. When we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma praying, one Sunday afternoon about 4 o'clock with another couple, tornadoes is all around. Yeah. We had a lot of tornadoes that year. I'm not used to being around tornadoes. But you know something never shook, shook, shook us? Yeah. We just stayed in there in the living room, got in the floor there, just sit there and just prayed. Started praying in the Holy Ghost. And God gave me a word right out of my mouth. He said, go to Hampton. There are people waiting for you. <laughs> people waiting for you to start this church. But on the, on the journey, I might share this a little bit Sunday, we got distracted a little bit. All we kind of turned from, started looking at money, looking at uh, houses, and looking at uh, uh, comfort, and looking at our needs already being met. But then God straightened us right out. You see, every time we begin to obey God, and move in, in the things of God, we always stop and pray, God, this ain't you, just let us know. Because I don't want to do anything that's not God. I do not want to, I tell people all the time, don't you pastor church just because you want to pastor. Because people will kill you. But when you feel the Holy Ghost, you know God's called you, you can handle every obstacle, every situation. I don't mean that would be ugly. But people come against you one day, they love you to pieces, they just love you all. About a, that's the best thing since sliced bread. Two weeks they're gone. You say, well, how come you left? But the Lord, Lord told me to leave. I said, God told you to come. He changed his mind real quick, didn't he? <laughs> but listen, praying. Lord Walsh prayed. Got a vision. Saw everything. That's how you see your future and your present, where you're at right now, and the direction God wants in your life or your family. We gotta pray in the Holy Ghost. We cannot get lazy during this time. It's not a time to get lazy. It's time to get active in the Word of God and trust the Word of God. Amen. It's time that we get our house in order. It's time we get our house in order. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. God is so good. This church has been built for 42 years. Well, actually 40, one, 40, uh, uh, 40 and a half years. Because the first six months was at Holiday Inn. Second six months was upstairs in what we call the upper room. And the next six months was in a restaurant. So eight, from 18 months time we started, we moved in this building. 18 months. That's supernatural church. Because we had no money, but we had vision. We had a word from God. And God said, build. I had no money. We had $2,000 in the bank. You think this building costs just $2,000? The, the, the grass on the land costs more than $2,000. I'm not painting no roses on me, us. I'm just telling you how good God's been to us. It hasn't been easy. We've had to kill a lot of devils on the way. We had to fight a good fight of faith. We had to stand out drown. And people come and instead of encouraging you, they discourage you. Time and time again, people discourage you. And my wife and I, we join hands and we pray. Say, we're going to follow you, Jesus. If nobody else follows you, we're going to follow Jesus. And we've always done that. We go through a crisis in our life. Lord, we're going to believe you. We know you'll take care of the situation. When Gil got hurt at that time, they said he had brain damage. 
he may not live. I grabbed her right there in the hospital, in the emergency room, grabbed her hand right there. I'm not ashamed to pray in the hospital. Amen. I'm not ashamed to play nowhere. Amen. I grabbed her hand and said, now, honey, we've got to practice what we preach. It, was, it wasn't easy. To walk by faith is not my sight. Amen. But God worked a miracle. Amen. One time when he got hurt and that eye was split all open, the doctor said he's never seen nothing like that. He said, I've never prepared a, a surgery like that to, to put that back together even. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. I said, Doc, I said, I'll tell you what. If you're so, I'll pray. Amen. He looked at me kind of funny. He said, okay. <laughs> and when he did that, he came, we came back a week later, and he called another doctor in there to look at Gil. Said, look at this. Look how perfect that is. You can't even tell where it's been done, been cut, spit at. Amen. God is good. Amen. But you've got to know on the inside. You've got to have a knowing on the inside. Amen. You just can't step out there in thin air and hope things will work. Amen. People go buy houses hoping it'll work end up losing them. People buy car, uh, cars and Get over in debt. So, well, that's, I'm, God told me to buy that car. You don't have no money. You see it going down the road, record, pulling down the road. There goes your faith car. <laughs> what I'm saying, church, to you, praying in the Holy Ghost, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. God is a good God. I said, God is a good God. I said, God is a good God. Amen. So when you pray tonight in the Holy Ghost, when we get done, we're going to spend a few minutes just thanking God and praising God for answering our prayer. God has answered so many prayers, so many prayers. And he's not through yet. I said, God's not through with us yet. There's a lot more God wants to do. Amen.